from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, May the 1st, 2024. Two IDF soldiers were killed in Gaza on Sunday. They are 28-year-old Master Sergeant in Reserve Ido Aviv and 37-year-old Master Sergeant in Reserve Kalkidan Maharim. The IDF was looking into the deaths, which according to the Times of Israel, may have been a case of friendly fire during a firefight with Hamas terrorists. The battle against Hamas continues. The IDF said on Monday a rocket was fired from Gaza towards the city of Sterot, which was, it wrote, successfully intercepted. A short time later, the IDF said Air Force fighter jets attacked operational shafts, an anti-tank launch site, and a terrorist infrastructure in the area from which the launch was detected in the northern Gaza Strip. The IDF also continues to defend its northern border with Lebanon, hitting terror targets of terror group Hezbollah, who continued to fire rockets at northern Israel, including rockets, it's said, that crossed from Lebanese territory towards the Matula area. Damage was caused. There were no casualties. And amid the fighting in Gaza and efforts to reach a hostage deal with terror group Hamas, who is due to respond to the latest proposal on the table, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel, where he wrote, I met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on efforts to achieve a ceasefire deal with the release of hostages and the imperative of sustaining increases in aid to civilians throughout Gaza. Blinken also met with Israel's President Isaac Herzog on these issues. Herzog saying to Blinken, as you said correctly, full responsibility for the hostages release lies now on Hamas. The whole world must unanimously take decisions to this end and do all it can to bring the hostages back home now. The hostages have now been held in Hamas captivity in Gaza for 208 days. The Times of Israel cited Blinken saying at a meeting of the World Economic Forum in Saudi Arabia on Monday that Hamas has before it a proposal that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily generous on the part of Israel. And in this moment, he said the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. Later today, Blinken met with Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, at the Kerem Shalom crossing with Gaza. The two also toured the Israeli border community of Kibbutz near Oz, which was devastated during the Hamas massacre of October the 7th. Well, as anti-Israel protests at college campuses here in the U.S. continue, protests at Columbia University drastically escalated Monday night when a group of protesters broke into and took over a university building, barricading themselves from the inside and out. They also hung a banner on the front of the building that read Antifada. Last night, the school called the New York Police Department to intervene. A university spokesperson said that after the university learned overnight that Hamilton Hall had been occupied, vandalized, and blockaded, we were left with no choice. Columbia public safety personnel were forced out of the building, and a member of our facilities team was threatened. We will not risk the safety of our community or the potential for further escalation. Dozens of protesters were arrested by the NYPD and taken into custody. As we've been reporting to you, many Jewish students on college campuses feel unsafe, say they have been verbally and physically threatened and even reportedly attacked. Columbia spokesman Ben Chang said yesterday that disruptions on campus have created a threatening environment for many of our Jewish students and faculty, and he said contributes to a hostile environment in violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. White House spokesman Andrew Bates was cited as saying about the situation at Columbia that President Biden condemns the use of the term Antifada as he has the other tragic and dangerous hate speech displayed in recent days. President Biden, he said, respects the right to free expression, but protests must be peaceful and lawful. Forcibly taking over buildings is not peaceful. It is wrong. 
and hate speech and hate symbols have no place in America. And Biden mentioned the protests on college campuses in his remarks for Jewish American Heritage Month, noting his release of the first ever United States national strategy to counter anti-Semitism and clarified, he said, the civil rights protections for Jews under Title VI. Also noting the Department of Education has launched investigations into anti-Semitism on college campuses. Biden said, together we are sending the message that in America, evil will not win. Hate will not prevail. The venom and violence of anti-Semitism will not be the story of our time. Biden did also mention the atrocities committed by Hamas on October the 7th, saying Jews across the country and around the world are still coping with the trauma and horror of that day and the months since and said my administration is working around the clock to free the hostages who have been held by Hamas for over half a year. As I have said to their families, we will not rest until we bring them home. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, May the 1st at 7 o'clock, David Harris speaks with Lord Ian Austin, a prominent British political figure and outspoken foe of anti-Semitism about the post-October 7th situation in the UK and threats to the Jewish community and liberal democratic values. At 7.30, Benjamin Anthony hosts former commander of the Israeli Air Force, Major General in Reserve Eli Shkedi, to learn about the destruction of the Syrian nuclear reactor in 2007 and why never again means never again. At 9, the late Elie Wiesel is on L'Chaim. At 10, filmmakers Petra Epperlein and Michael Tucker talk about their film, The Meaning of Hitler, which explores what Hitler means in the current waves of white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and the weaponization of history. At 10.30, an encore of this newscast, and coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, May the 1st, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader, Am Yisrael Chai.